Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. No, we're not done with the book yet. So let us continue to travel into the land of my bedtime book of two-minute stories. Edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories are Robbie and the Fox by Margaret Connor and Mickey Monkey's Tricks by Rosemary Garland. This is a really long two minutes. I, I mean, we've been going for two minutes for how many episodes now? <laughs> <laughs> Robbie and the Fox. Robbie, Mother, and Daddy had moved from the big town where they'd always lived and gone to live in the country. They'd only been there a week and Robbie was missing all the things he'd liked in the big town. He missed the shops and street lamps and all the people. He didn't think he liked the country very much. It was so quiet where they live now. Just their cottage and a farm down the lane. You'll make some friends when we've been here a bit longer, said Mother. The country is an interesting place to live in, really. She showed Robbie a book with pictures of country animals in it. There was a hedgehog, some field mice, and a fox. Robbie said the fox looked a bit like a dog with a big bushy tail. He said he'd like to see the fox. You may have to wait a long time, said Daddy. The fox only comes out when it's getting dark, and it doesn't let people see it very often. Why not? asked Robbie. Because people, especially farmers, don't like foxes. Foxes are naughty and try to steal chickens, said Daddy. Where do foxes live? asked Robbie. Daddy pointed across the garden. They live up there in that little wood on the side of the hill, he said. They live in holes, like the rabbits. One afternoon, Mother took Robbie up the hill to the wood to pick primroses and violets. And they saw some fox's holes. The holes were half hidden away under some bramble bushes, so they were lucky to find them. But they didn't see a fox. Soon it was time to go home because the sun was setting, and by the time they reached their lane, it had set behind the hill and made the clouds pink and golden. Then all too soon, it started to grow dark. We must hurry now, Mother told Robbie. I can't. I'm tired, said Robbie. So they had to walk slowly home along the lane. We're nearly there, said Mother at last. Just one corner to turn. As they turned the corner of the lane, they noticed something in the middle of the road. They stopped and stared. Oh, whispered Mummy, I do believe it's a fox. Robbie felt so excited. He wanted to get near enough to have a good look at it. The fox didn't seem to know they were behind him. He started to move slowly along the lane while Mother and Robbie crept behind him. Every now and then he stopped and looked around him, and then they stopped too, until he moved on. But as they neared the gate of the farm, the fox swiftly disappeared through a hole in the hedge. Robbie rushed indoors to tell Daddy about him. Daddy thought perhaps they ought to telephone the farmer to let him know a fox was around his chicken houses. The farmer thanked Daddy, and the next morning he came with his children to invite Robbie and his parents to see his farm. Robbie soon made friends with the farmer's children, and he felt very proud when they said they'd lived there all their lives and never seen a fox. He'd only lived there one week and already seen one. I like living in the country, he said suddenly. Mother smiled. Somehow I thought you would. When you grew used to it, she said. What an interesting story. Especially the part like, I'm tired and stuff like that. He wasn't tired, he was just tired of walking. Completely different. Them shitty boys. <laughs> I can actually say that because I've lived out in the country most of my life. And had foxes right by your house. Oh yeah, a whole family of them. The female fox was actually friends with one of our cats for a while before she ended up with kits and then she was like, nope, you ain't getting near me. Look, it was great and everything, but I have children to think of now. Yeah, we also have skunks, beavers, chipmunks, squirrels, probably mostly squirrels, a lot of animals. I had bears. Bears were fun because they were smart. They got all the fruit off the trees. Not just that. One bear one time took a window intact with its frame out of the wall of our back porch and put it down by the side. So kind of it. Just to get to a hole. 
gallon of Crisco. Didn't break the window, just took it out and put it down next to it. So yeah, smart bears. But back to the story and the very nice art, especially like the sunset in the background of the image with the fox. So nice colors, how it gradiates from green to yellow to orange, just a little line of that at the hills and very nice stylus. There's like no real outline to anything in these images. No, there's no outlines. And on the image you're discussing, most of it looks like it was daubed in with a paintbrush, you know, where you just quickly... Or a sponge. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little sponge. Yeah. For the background, but not for Robbie, Mother, or Fox. Actually, I think a little bit of them there were just painted over after the sponging, because if you look at this other picture of Bob, you can see some of the texturing on his colors. Mm. Is that kind of has its slight spottiness to it. I was specifically talking about this image. You can kind of see some of that with his shorts on this one. But like I said, I think they were painted over after the sponging technique, but a lot of the background has a lot more of the texture from the sponging than him or his mother. Who at one point switches from mother to mummy. It's one time in the entire story, and it's like, why? Yeah, the fox is nicely even too very cute. Any observances other than, why mummy? Well, the whole quick thing of uh, foxes are naughty and try to steal chickens. Foxes are hungry and clever, and a chicken coop looks like a larder. It is to the human. It's not, well, technically poaching is stealing, but it's more like poaching than outright stealing because someone else has a claim to the livestock and someone else is trying to take it. Yeah, um... It, it's not the fox being naughty, it's the human perceiving the fox's actions as being naughty, which is completely different. Because the fox is just being a fox. They are very clever, though. It's like, I set up this really intricate fence maze system. They'll never... Where did that fox come from? Kind of like this guy who built a whole elaborate system to protect his bird fears from squirrels. Didn't work. Nope. One squirrel found a shortcut and they all followed. I like the first image where Robbie's looking so bored and he's playing with the truck and then you have the book of animals off to the side. And it really illustrates the, I don't want to be here. I wonder, based on how clean the edges are and the kind of stamping, I wonder if they, he or she used stencils for some of this. Mickey Monkey's Tricks. Ooh ha. Mickey the monkey was always in trouble. And no wonder, because he was always up to his naughty monkey tricks. He lived on a farm, and all the other animals were always getting cross with him because he did such naughty things. One day Mick was in the big feeding shed where Mr. Giles the farmer was busy putting out all the food for the animals. Now, said Mr. Giles to his wife, today I have to go out and will not be back for feeding time. Will you feed the animals for me? Everything's ready so that you will not have anything to do except give the right food to the right animals at five o'clock. Mickey heard this and thought he would like to feed the animals. He wanted to help. So when it was nearly five o'clock, he put the hands of the clock back so that Mrs. Giles thought it was only four o'clock. Then Mickey went to the feeding shed. He gave a big bowl of bones to the cow. She didn't like that at all. He gave a bowl of fish to the horse. He didn't like that at all. He gave a bowl of corn to the dog. He didn't like that at all. He gave a bunch of bananas to the chickens. They didn't like that at all. He gave a bowl of cow cake to the cat. She didn't like that at all. At six o'clock, when Mrs. Giles came out to feed the animals, because she thought it was five o'clock, she heard a dreadful noise in the farmyard. The cow was mooing because she didn't like the dog's food. The horse was neighing because he didn't like the cat's food. The dog was barking because he didn't like the chicken's food. The cat was mewing because she didn't like the cow's food. And the chickens were clucking because they didn't like the bananas. When Mrs. Giles saw the bananas, which were really the monkey's food, she knew what had happened. So she smiled to herself and found the only food that was left, a big bundle of hay, which was really the horse's food, and gave it to Mickey. Poor Mickey didn't like that either, so he began to cry. Serves you right for muddling up all the food, said Mrs. Giles. Poor Mickey didn't have any supper that night, and he never played that trick again. But he still plays other naughty tricks. 
He can't really help it because all monkeys get up to monkey tricks, don't they? I don't know about that. Also, how many farms have monkeys? Everything else is a working animal or a larder animal. Yeah, where did the monkey come from? Why was he at this farm? And why hasn't he been given to someone else if he's so much of a trouble? Huh. I wonder if she switched things up and corrected the food after the monkey was sad. Well, Mickey didn't get any supper that night, but I'm sure that she fixed it for everyone else. That was kind of interesting because the horse is well done. The cat is well done, but it's a different style. It's very cartoony compared to the horse is just more realistic. And even the chicken is more realistic. But the cow also has a slight bit of that cartooniness to it. Not too much, but it's there. Kind of weird. Very nicely done, the um, two color art just again. A lot of heavy use of shading of a darker green. And I love how the cow is just ink, black and white. But everything else has a touch of color to it except for the cat. Black and white cow, black and white cat, everything else utilizes some green, oh. except for the bones. And the fish. Yeah, the fish are more in gray, which is the same with the cow cake. But the cow cake has some green to it. A little bit, but it's mostly gray. Yeah, interesting. And there's a Mickey having a little bit of fun with the clock. Though to me, it looks like he's almost pushing the hand forward instead of back. So I misinterpreted that image when I was looking at it while you were reading. And I was like, oh, he's going to do something where he pushes time forward and gets her to misfeed the animals because of what time and what thing she was supposed to pull from. Nope. Because at first you think, looking at that image, oh, he's going to put the hand of the clock forward so that they get fed sooner. Yo, what did you think of this story? The main thing is, why is there a monkey on the farm? Yeah, that's the biggest question. Once you get past that. <laughs> Ignoring the why is there a monkey on the farm. Okay, so this is another story where we have monkeys playing tricks. The last one was a toy monkey, but still. And reading this and Robbie back to back, we have animals being naughty by human standards. Though Mickey's tricks are not something that would occur to the average simian. So... The monkey is much more humanized than the fox in the previous story. Also, it's, like you said, the human point of view of the animal and also the generalization. All monkeys do this. All foxes do that. Not really. Some of them do, some of them don't. Would you like to move on to the poem? Mm -hmm. Down beneath the ocean green lay a little submarine. The captain, who was rather tubby, looked out and found it rather muddy. We'll stick, he cried, into the mud, because we sank with such a thud. To rise again, I must be thinner. I'll have to go without my dinner. Cute and kind of funny and, man, is that text hard to read. Really? At least from my angle. Oh, that's better. It's still pretty hard to read because it's black on darkening gray. And I didn't realize he was tubby until I read the poem. But I see the captain through the porthole window... I believe is what you call that on the submarine. I believe it would be the port side window because you don't really have port holes in a submarine. submarine. Yeah, like a screen door. Yeah, it's a fun little poem about someone who needs to lose weight, apparently. Also, going starving yourself doesn't make you lose weight. And if he was too heavy to start, how did the submarine move at all from where it was docked? Hmm. We ask lots of questions about simple poems. And if he's captain, that implies a crew. Also, I don't think the majority of submarines are set to be operated by a single individual. So isn't there a crew? Hmm. If not, he better accrue some more. <laughs> All right. So this has been two more stories from my bedtime book of two-minute stories. What a wealth of resources this book is. <laughs> Yeah, it just keeps going and going. Edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories were Robbie and the Fox by Margaret Connor. And Mickey Monkey's Tricks. Yes, I'm enunciating carefully. By Rosemary Garland. Thanks for listening. I hope you've been enjoying this ongoing trip. 
of multiple unconnected stories that all come from the same book. We are getting close to the end, but we're not there yet. So keep hanging around. If you are just finding this, you can go back through the two minute story playlist and get all caught up. We have them in the order they were in the book, but you can listen to them in whatever order you want. Cause like we said, they're not connected. Haven't been listening and haven't picked up a copy of the book yet? Check for the Amazon link. Uh, they're running about 50 cents or so, which is about what I got this for as a kid. Presumably from a yard sale. I honestly don't remember. It's just written on the inside cover. Just want to do some ordinary shopping? Ebates link. Yes, I know it has nothing to do with books unless you happen to use it to go to Barnes & Noble or some other bookstore that is connected to Ebates. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content in the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.